Brett had mentioned, um, Life on This Planet blog, they, one of the girls from this original band went on to actually go form Belly, um, Tiffany Bell, or something Bell. Um, and so this one is, just has the other girl, Christian Hirsch. Um, but this is actually an amazing, amazing record. It's, it's just a huge, huge 90, 90s record. I highly recommend checking this out. Great sound. Really hard to they do. They have a lot of different genres. They're, they're not really one you can box in too well. Now I'm going to show these four here that aren't really ones I enjoyed to get them out of the way. Um, I know I'm not going to be um, Daryl, Mr. Uh, Daryl Washington won't be the biggest fan, but he mentioned it to me in a comment about the jazz and Facebook. But I like jazz. Smooth jazz a lot of times doesn't seem to be doing it for me. I love myself like some Bobby Caldwell. But other than that, um, it's only two jazz I've ever listened to and really liked as an artist. But it's just, I don't know, it just seems like it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like I'm feeling it. Um, anyway, she's the ones I'm going to toss, I'm not going to get too into them for you. This is Basia, or Basia, The Sweetest Illusion. You hear that drumming, by the way? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to toss that one. Um... I got the, this cover looked really interesting. This guy's name is Christopher Boskol, Land of Music. It's the album on a record label called Nebula from uh, 92. The record looked really interesting. I didn't know what I was going to get from it. I figured maybe it might be some sort of cool type of jazz, but it's just a little bit too smooth for me, you know? I can always try them, but I don't know. More, but I don't think it's going to work for me. And this one, I was really expecting something cool from this record, but I just wasn't feeling it. It's very too early sounding electronic and it just doesn't really do it for me. It's from 1988. I mean, great for them at the time. They were doing great things at the time. Enough for me, Dave Grusin and his brother Don Grusin, Sticks and Stones, a digital master of it. This wasn't for me, really. And then this one is uh, not some jazz, but... This one was just, it just didn't seem too special. I mean, I can, this one might be worth trying again, but it wasn't working for me too much. Um, it's a, an artist called Aslan, and the album is called Lemon Love. It came out in uh, 05 on Capitol. And I thought the record looked really cool, and the back has her, like, with this vinyl record of her own record. I thought it's a really cool back image. Yeah, so we'll see. But let's get on to the great stuff, the cool stuff. Gotta do this quick. Got a lot of things to show here. This is really cool. This is sort of like a southern country rock type of band. With some banjo, some hard rock sometimes, some really fast drums at times. Uh, this is from 1999. The album is called, I'm sorry, the group is called Irene's Kitchen. And it's called The Traveling Salvation Music Show. Sorry I can't speak more about these things all the time now because these 15 minute limits that YouTube has put me on. I'm just that badass. But I found this really cool. Some really cool country tinged um, music. Irene's Kitchen. I haven't listened to this one yet, but it looks really interesting because I really, I'm not really too big in compilation, but for 25 cents or something, I'll give this a shot. It's from a, an, a record label called Putu Mayo Re Presents, Putu Mayo Records, it's called Louisiana Gumbo, and it's a collection of blues, soul, and RB from New Orleans and the BIOS of Louisiana. And I wanted to go through this. It has a really cool packaging that shows like breakdowns of every artist being that is in the compilation. So I, I was interested in checking that out. Maybe you'll know some of the artists. Charles Sheffield, James Booker, Clifton Chenier, Johnny Adams, Lynn August, the Neville Brothers, Ro Eddie Bo, Rocky Charles, Percy Mayfield, Snooks Eaglin. So if you know your New Orleans, maybe you know some of this stuff. This is really great, um, what I've listened to so far. I've listened to the live record. This is the record I was really intrigued by, the cover. Her name is Wendy Mahari, and the record is called Released. It's a two-album set, and there's one with studio recordings and one with live, and I've listened to the live one. And she's really great. She's a piano player. Um, there's a lot of people online when you're looking at her reviews that will compare her, compare her with Tori. So for people like Conrad and Jim and Shannon and my fault through Alley. Uh, she's very, I really, really love it. Listen to her song, um, Devil Feels at Home, the opening song, and then Diane is Resting, D-Y-A-N. I think you'll enjoy it. And hey, the two record set, 50 cents, CD, live in studio, this is a really great buy. It's another great female artist to learn about. This was um, Annie Lennox, the one I think from the Eurythmics. 
I was playing this in my last video, the Medusa album. It's like an album of covers. And this is really cool. I really like this. I love the song No More I Love Yous. Um, Downtown Lights is a Blue Nile song. And I love the Blue Nile. I know she did that. I knew she did Waiting in Vain because Mary actually likes it. Um, that song a lot. And there is Something So Right also, which is this um, uh, Paul Simon song. This is a cool album. This is good to know for Annie Lennox. This is great. This is a great find here for 50 cents or so, dollar. Um, this is uh, Wars of Canada. Music has the right to children. I think I actually had this on my computer back in the day. It's on Matador from 98. It's probably one of their first albums. And uh, man, this record is just freaking great. Um, really cool with like, how they use these like samples on so many of the songs of voices and people. Great stuff. This is really great too. Um, this is a, comp a music record, a record label called Pamplin Music, and they put out this stuff, I think, called Simplicity Praise. So it's like pr worship praise music for the Lord, and it has different volumes and different instruments. So this is volume five, trumpet, an instrumental, pr instrumental praise experience. And it's just really great um, worship sounding music that's really s solemn, um, that works, I don't know if that word works there, it's very calming. And uh, it works really well when I'm actually reading my Bible. So it's all trumpet in terms of the worship music as the instrument. This is really great. I really love this. Oh, I'm so excited I saw this. My man, Damien, check this out. I found a copy of, um, of, uh, um, Ned's Atomic Dustbin Godfather. Probably like a quarter for it. I might be joking. I know you mentioned you're running your videos recently. That's everywhere in like other in the other countries and UK or something. And if you can find it in the states, so well, I found it at a Goodwill. Uh, I do need to listen more, but I can see why you like it. <clears throat> this is an album by a group called Trace. I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit. There's just six songs, sort of independent. I think they're from the Charlotte, maybe from the one of the Carolina areas. It is really great. It's called History of Miles. I haven't looked at this one yet, but it looks kind of interesting. It's a band called This Providence. They're um, on uh, a, a label called Fuel by Ramen from 06. And it's actually like indie music, and they don't really make it explicit, but you can tell from the songs and what they're about that they're actually Christian. So I'm interested because it sounds like pop punk music, but it's a Christian base. So it looks really interesting from the cover. Some people seem to know this. I hope you enjoy listening to this, um, Brad, when you pulled off the shelf, Mr. Helm. This is the Sundays, Static and Silence. I have a promotional copy of this. This song is, this album is good. I never knew them before. I think there's certain songs that are better than others. So it's not completely strong release, but there's some songs that are great. This is from 97. Really like the song She, really like Leave the City. Um, I have to listen to it again, but I did like it. I really like Summertime, the opening song too. I really love the guitar work. I haven't listened to this yet. This is a religious, another um, religious Christian group from the 90s called Small Town Poets. Listen closely. I haven't done much listening yet. This is sweet. Um, this is a band called Tuatara, Breaking the Ethers. Most of you guys probably know this, actually. I can't remember. I think it's someone from R.E.M. I can't remember exactly, but there's someone from famous from a group. It's like a super group effort, kind of, with like guys from other bands doing private, doing their work. This is from 97 as well on Sony Music, on Epic, I mean. I thought this was cool. It's really like worldy, experimental type of music, and some people think it's not the best effort of theirs, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, I thought the song, Burning the Keys, I think it was, was the one. It's a great song. This is a Japanese import CD of Count Basie, Joe Turner, and Eddie Cleanhead's um, Kansas City Shout. It's kind of cool to have the old... Japanese export. I think mean, it's a cool thing to have. A little collectible on a uh, Pablo Digital. I need those as more. It's my first time ever listening to Count Basie. I think his voice is really cool. Uh, I've showed this before. I love this great, great band. Howling Bells Radio Wars from um, 2009 on Network Records. Independent. This is this is great. This is their great band. I like this record a lot. I highly recommend checking out songs like um, Let's Be Kids. My favorite song here is Golden Web. It's a great song. Miss Bell's song, which is the Radio Wars theme. This is a great album. And they have a few more. The Wise Guys, The Antidote. 
cool DJ album. Say ooh, la la, say song. Come on, come on. This is some funky stuff right here. This is Down to the Bone um, from a group called Cellar Funk. On um, Narada Jazz. And this is from 04. I was so so by that CD. Shiny Blue. <laughs> it's so dope. But yeah, this is some funky stuff right here. Oh, look at this. I got a double, L double CD of um, Little Feet waiting for Columbus, so when I got this so cheap, I was like, obviously I'm getting this right away. So, it has a lot more than the record does. I gotta go through this. It's a double record. To the previously unissued outtakes, outtakes first issued on Hoi Hoi, so it's a bunch of stuff. I gotta look into this. This I haven't listened to yet either. Where's my time, by the way? Whew! Okay, I'm getting close. We got three minutes, guys. I can do this. Um, this is my first time I'm gonna try to listen to more Van Morrison. It's called What's Wrong With This Picture from 2003 on Blue Note. So it's a little bit of his later works. Tell me if you guys know your Van Morrison. How is his later stuff? The Blue Note here. I just thought it was a really nice packaging. I didn't know it was a newer one. I thought maybe it was just a re-release. And it has a... I didn't want to read it. I wanted to read it inside. It's just a really nice booklet with the lyrics. And uh, I want to sit down with it. Yeah. I probably didn't spend more than 10 bucks for all this stuff, I'm not even going to lie. 10 or 12. Um, these two, I'll show these two together. Um, these are both bands I know and I knew the records, but I wanted to have copies, so I figured it can't hurt. Plus, I can always trade them in, probably. This is one of my favorite records back in high school, probably, not joking, my later years. Great pop punk band from Long Island. The starting line, Say It Like You Mean It. I used to have this on there, on this copy. It's from Drive Through Records. It's such a great freaking record. Um, this is from 02. Actually, it's a really cool... Oh, I like this a lot. Remember this. And then Brand New, which is another great band that's really, really progressed and changed over the course of their records. And this is their newest album, Daisy. They, um, their third record, um, The God and Devil or Something Inside, or Something Inside of Me, is my favorite, but Daisy... They just, they just really changed things up. They've really changed from their first album, I'm telling you. This is from 09. It's their last album they put out. Remember the song on here, um, You Stole. It's great. Sugar, Copper Blue. Um, I haven't spent more time on this. Um, and I, I haven't... It's just everyone talks about this so much. And this guy, Bob Mould. I didn't know. I never listened to Husker Du, if that's how you say it. But I was so excited because I mean that, and along with Godfather, I had seen these like shown a lot. On um, someone showed this either on vinyl or CD in the Facebook group, and I recognized it right away, so I got it. And uh, I do like it. I want to sit down with the lyrics more. I listen to it in the car a lot, and I like it. But I want to sit down with the car. I feel like it's good, but it hasn't clicked where people are talking about this on like Amazon and all music is like being one of the best records of the '90s, and I really want to get it more. I love the green casing too. This is on Ryko Disc. Last but not least, this is an amazing, amazing find. This is the Jesus record from Rich Mullins and the Ragamuffin Band. Um, it's really great packaging. I love this song, too. Um, you got two discs in here. The story behind this, it's a great packaging. The booklet and everything goes over everything. Um, this was the last... He made these... Rich Mullins died in a, in a car accident. By the way, I have to thank Mr. Bizarro, Aaron, for him, because he got me into knowing who he was. Of course, Mary knew him a long time, but I didn't know anything about the guy. The Jesus demos in the first album is um, Rich Mullins had a record coming out called the Jesus Record, very type of like you know stripped down type of songs about Jesus, and he recorded them in an abandoned church on a cassette player, cassette recorder. Um, so I've been listening to only those those to get those down, and they're great songs, and they're him acoustically, so they're lo-fi. He passed away nine days later, so that's all they had of the record. So the record, Jesus Record, is all his friends that got together and did all those songs as live band versions with other people singing and doing the songs. So it's like a two-disc set. You have his stripped-down versions of the song, the Jesus demos, and then you have the Jesus Record, which is the people. I still haven't listened to the record because I'm into the demos a lot, and I want to know the demos so I can be like, wow, and see if the records can live up to it. But this was a really cool find to find for like 50 cents. Really great package too. I just love the booklet. And this is this is lovely. So 
All right, guys. I will talk to you guys soon. One love. That's my CD update. Be good. You'll see vinyl soon.